First it was Tunisia, then Egypt. Now the autocratic regime in Libya may be the next to fall. Anti-government protests are threatening the future of dictator Muammar Gaddafi, but his 42-year reign may not end without a fight. Forces loyal to Gaddafi struck back at protesters, opening fire on the crowds from trucks, helicopters, and even warplanes. Human Rights Watch estimates more than 200 people have been killed since the protests began last week. And last night, Gaddafi went on state television to say he was in Tripoli and to deny rumors that he had fled to Venezuela, but his grip may be loosening. On Monday, several of Libya's foreign diplomats, including one of its ambassadors at the United Nations, called on Gaddafi to step down. I think it is enough. He has to understand that, uh, that uh, it is enough. The Libyan people is not, uh, does not want him, and uh, he killed enough uh, from the, the, the Libyan people, and it is time to uh, uh, get out uh, and uh, let uh, the, uh, the people have his freedom. We are joined by CBS News foreign affairs analyst Pamela Falk. Pamela, thanks for being here with us. Absolutely, Betty. First and foremost, is there any way that you can see Gaddafi holding on to power? Well, he's going to try, but given the brutality of the response to protests, and that includes helicopters, armed forces, airplanes, missiles, mm -hmm. and snipers, uh, it's less likely that he will be able to stay. The, what is more likely is that there will be some kind of a power vacuum that he leaves, and that is because the two areas of support, the tribal groups and the military, are divided in terms of supporting him or opposing him. All right, let's get to that power vacuum for just a right. second. So if he is gone and there is this power vacuum, is that going to lead to some kind of civil unrest, some kind of civil war? I mean, what's going to happen? Well, that's what his son is saying, Saif al-Islam Qaddafi, who is the younger son and was part of the move to uh, take, really, uh, Libya out of this pariah status that it was in in the 1990s, uh, is now saying that the uh, response will be brutal, that they will stay. His words were, this is not Egypt, this is not Tunisia, we are not leaving. And the response has been so brutal that you have seen some of the cracks in support, including, as you mentioned, diplomats, the ambassador, uh, Dabashi, at the UN, um, and a call by Dabashi and the other diplomats at the Libyan mission to the UN for the UN Security Council to act, and that's what they will do this morning, finally. I mean, they are finding their voice. Yeah, a lot of people are just appalled at the methods that are being used right. against these uh, protesters, like you said, warplanes and missiles. Okay, so if Gaddafi is overthrown, is there any chance that perhaps he would be convicted of war crimes? Yes, absolutely. I mean, that is something that Ambassador Ibrahim Dabashi called for, and that's right in the mission. I mean, in other words, his own mission to the UN is calling for his resignation. Now, he, they're also calling for possibility of war crimes, and that is because of the brutality of the response to the protesters. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the government was involved in the in 1988 with the Pan Am and was uh, accused of the Pan Am bombing. They paid $2.7 billion in compensation, mm -hmm. and they have uh, theoretically sworn that off, but he could certainly be brought to uh, the International Criminal Court for war crimes. And what you see here now is that the military is asking questions about what can be done. Now, different than Egypt, what you see in Libya is the military being perceived as brutal, and therefore they can't necessarily take power. Al-Qaeda in the Maghreb, Islamic Maghreb is out there. They've been around. Uh, there are other groups that they're worried about having some kind of a civil war and certainly terrorism coming back in. Yeah, there are a lot of things at play here. And, and to put it all into perspective, because a lot of people still have Egypt on their mind, right. this is very different. Talk to us about what the protests are all about and why Gaddafi's own diplomats are rising up against him. Right. Well, the, the diplomats came to the fore mainly because of the brutality of the response to the protests. Mm -hmm. And that's not what you saw in Egypt. In Egypt, you saw the military basically beloved. They were able to take over. They didn't fire except for a brief period on the protesters. And they allowed that to happen. And if there was any brutality, it was by the secret police and the police, not the army. And so here you it, can't have the yeah, army take over. Yeah, but what is at the root of these protests? Oh, at the root of the protests are a few things. One is the autocratic rule, as you say. It's really a fiefdom of 40 years in which he started as prime minister, but he changed it into this very idiosyncratic 
revolution. I mean, most people feel that he's somewhat unstable. His own diplomats say he is, and some of his Air Force uh, commanders have defected today, saying they would not fire on the troops. Second is the economy, and that's really 10 percent unemployment and most of the population living under the poverty line, and that is at core of what this is. There's no process, there's no democracy, and there's no, no uh, balance of the economy. Let's broaden it out uh, to the worldwide effects, especially yeah. here in the U.S. This is the first major OPEC state uh, to see mm -hmm. protests like this. Oil prices went up yesterday. What kind of long-lasting effect could this have on oil? Well, this will have a big impact on oil. Now, oil experts seem to think it could take a little while to really hit at the pump because there are U.S. supplies. But it will hit eventually because, first of all, one of the largest tribes has said they will shut down oil exports. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the oil companies are leaving. So that's the biggest impact economically. And then, of course, all of the businesses that came back to Libya are now feeling this is an unstable regime. It always was, and maybe it never changed uh, its, its way of dealing with people. And his son is no less idiosyncratic than he is in terms of rules. So people are getting out, and that's the biggest problem. Now you look at Morocco, Algeria, Yemen, Bahrain, and maybe Saudi Arabia. And so yeah. that's the biggest it's problem. A domino effect. A domino effect. Absolutely. About a lot. Uh, a lot going on. Pamela, thanks so much for breaking it down for us. We really appreciate it. CBS News foreign affairs analyst Pamela Falk.